This is the solution to question 2a. Given that x is equal to minus 3 is a solution to the modulus of x plus p is equal to 5, find the two values of p where p is an element of z, the integers. So what we're going to do here is remember that the parallel lines there around the x plus p means the modulus, so you can have a positive or a negative solution. So you always turn your answer into a positive, so that's why it's written as x is e or equal to 5. But remember that that could equal to negative 5 originally. So we have x plus p is equal to 5. And it's telling us that x is equal to negative 3. So all I'm going to do here is sub in my minus 3 for x. So minus 3 plus p is equal to 5. Now, like I said, that could have been a negative 5. So we have minus 3 plus p is equal to 5. And we have negative 3 plus p is equal to negative 5. And all we have to do is solve both of those equations. So moving over the negative 3 or adding 3 to both sides, I get 5 plus 3. So p is equal to positive 8. And we also have uh, p is equal to minus 5 minus 3. So p is equal to, sorry, that should be a plus 3. Minus 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So my two solutions, therefore, for p is p is equal to 8 and p is equal to negative 2. Now, you can verify your answer by subbing in uh, 8 into x plus p, and you should get 5 and negative 5. Okay, uh, that is part A. Scrolling on down now to part B. So part B, x plus 4 is a factor of f of x, where x is an element of the reals, and q is an element of z, which is the integers. Show that q is equal to minus 5, and then find the three roots of f of x. A couple of different ways you can do this. In order to find the other roots, you can use long division. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sub in my, uh, my root. So first of all, they've given us one of the factors. So the first factor there they've given us is x plus 4. So they've given me x plus 4 as one of my factors. Now to turn that into a root, uh, that's equal to 0, don't forget. So then one of my roots is moving over the, the positive 4, I get a negative 4. So that's my first root. So we've a couple of marks got there, first of all. In order to show that q is equal to negative 5, I'm going to sub in that root into f of x. So it's telling us that f of x is equal to x cubed uh, plus qx squared minus 22x plus 56. So in order to solve for q, I'm going to sub in my first root, which is minus 4. So that's going to find me f of minus 4 is equal to. So again, use brackets here for your calculator because we're using a negative 4 here. So I'm basically subbing in negative 4 for x. So that's going to be minus 4 cubed plus q times negative 4 squared minus 22 times x, which again is negative 4, uh, plus 56. Okay, and solving that, minus 4 cubed is negative 64, uh, plus q times minus 4 squared, which is 16, so 16q, and minus 22 by minus 4 is a positive 80, plus 56. Now, this is equal to 0, uh, because when you sub it into our uh, cubic equation, it should satisfy it because it's a factor, so it should be equal to 0. So that's why I'm going to let this equal to 0. So minus 64 plus 80 plus 56 is getting me 80 uh, plus 16q is equal to 0. So I'm just going to put the 0 at the back. So that's getting me 16q is equal to, well, when I subtract 80 from both sides, I get 16q is equal to negative 80. I'm going to divide across by 16. So q is equal to minus 80 divided by 16. So you can see here that q is equal to negative 5. So the question did want us to show that q is equal to negative 5. Well, we just have. 
Now I'm just going to scroll down and find my other two roots. So we have one of the roots, don't forget, we have it as negative four. Let's find the other two. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide my factor that they've given me, x plus four, and I'm going to divide that into my cubic x cubed uh, minus five x squared. So I'm subbing in my minus five for q now, minus 22 x, uh, plus 56. So I'm just going to divide this now, a bit of algebraic long division. Okay, so x into x cubed is x squared. I multiply it back down, x times x squared is x cubed, and x squared times 4x is positive 4x squared. I'm now going to change the signs, so that's becoming a minus, that's becoming a minus, x cubed take away x cubed is 0, minus 5x squared minus 4x squared is negative 9x squared. I'm then going to bring down my minus 22x and I'm going to go again. So I'm dividing x into minus 9x squared becomes minus 9x and multiplying minus 9x by x gives me minus 9x squared and minus 9x by 4 is giving me minus 36x. Again, change the signs. This negative now becomes a plus this time, and minus 9x plus 9x squared becomes 0, and minus 22x plus 36x becomes a positive 14x. Moving down my positive 56, so it's 14x plus 56, and dividing x into 14x becomes plus 14. And multiplying it down for the last time, 14 multiplied by x is 14x, and 14 multiplied by 4 is positive 56. And I change my signs, so that becomes a minus and a minus. 14x take away 14x is 0. 56 take away 56 is also 0, so that's giving me a remainder of 0. Okay, so that's leaving us now with a quadratic equation. So my quadratic equation, my solution there for my division is x squared minus 9x plus 14. Now I'm going to factorize that and when I factorize that it's a straightforward enough one. Multiples of 14 which adds to negative 9 so that's getting me a 7 and a 2 and multiply to positive 14 but add to negative 9 so they must be a negative and a negative. So there are my factors. Let's get our roots. So we have x minus 7 is equal to 0 and we have x minus 2 is equal to 0. So therefore my roots are x is equal to 7 and x is equal to 2. So filling in my answer down here my roots are going to be well my first one was minus 4 that we got at the start of the question and my other two here now are 7 and 2. And that's the solution to question uh, 2.